So yeah, welcome everyone. Uh, uh, this is ASP Student Challenge. Uh, this event was started uh, uh, to be in line with this uh, mission statement of uh, the American Society for Precision Engineering which goes like uh, the technology of uh, precision engineering should be promoted and it should be disseminated through education, training, and use by industry. So uh, Stuart Smith uh, is one of the committee chairs. He put this uh, uh, list of things that is considered the goals of the student challenge. I went ahead and highlighted uh, some of the interesting ones. So uh, students will for sure learn a lot of hands-on design and uh, build e uh, experience to uh, uh, demonstrate uh, precision engineering principles uh, specifically. So you'll have to collaborate with a lot of people and it'll be fun. And uh, another cool aspect of this uh, challenges is you get to talk with uh, uh, people from uh, industry, academia, uh, who are really experienced and it's in a very informal setting. Uh, uh, they are pretty chill with it. And um, also uh, the equipment you'll be using uh, are uh, part of uh, technologically advanced things that we uh, use every day, uh, but uh, it's put out in a very simpler manner. And uh, when we create instruments for a specific challenge, we try to keep the cost low. Uh, in a way, it uh, also expresses the uh, thing being uh, not too expensive, uh, doesn't limit the uh, technological capability of it, right? And you also get to meet uh, uh, industrial people who are looking to uh, hire a, a, a large pool of engineering talents, right? So I myself uh, had an internship opportunity from uh, one of our, uh, our sponsors, and I've seen a, a couple of people who uh, works full time as well. So recently we've been uh, uh, um, inspiring uh, undergraduate uh, students to uh, also uh, participate uh, in the student challenges. So uh, we kind of try to uh, uh, pull them into this uh, precision engineering uh, uh, schools of thought, right? And uh, there are schools which doesn't specifically do precision engineering, uh, but uh, they will also uh, uh, get exposed to the uh, things that uh, goes on in this realm. Right? So these are the goals. So uh, it all started in uh, 2014 in uh, Boston. The first year uh, uh, we made the students uh, sign up and they all showed up uh, for the conference. And then we told them, uh, uh, these are the things you have to uh, uh, solve, which were uh, three challenges, control, design, and metrology. It was an improv, so uh, uh, they did pretty well. And then uh, from this uh, challenge, uh, uh, we learned a lot uh, that how this event can be leveraged to uh, uh, make uh, uh, people interact with a lot. Like students uh, uh, from different places can interact with not only the students, but also with uh, uh, industrial people who just come and hang around and uh, look at the things you build and give advice and learn from you guys, right? So uh, in Austin, the next year, uh, uh, we announced the challenge to uh, use a tuning fork to scan this uh, penny. Uh, the task was to design an XY uh, flexure-based stage, right? So uh, the students who uh, uh, signed up, submitted the design, they showed up to the conference, and then we gave them the uh, uh, this uh, set of MIG blocks, which uh, goes together. Right, so you put them together as a, uh, a single entity, uh, so you don't require uh, any machining uh, capability at the conference, right? And that was that. In 2016, for the first time, uh, we didn't only announce the challenge, uh, we also uh, uh, sent out the equipment so the students get to build it at their location. And then uh, uh, they'll disassemble everything, send it to us, and we'll bring the whole kit to the conference where they assemble it back, right? So this year we used uh, we did a uh, laser scanner which will uh, write a, a PE logo on the wall. So this is uh, one of the team design, and that's a picture from the report that they submit. The next year uh, it's a vibration isolation challenge in Charlotte. So uh, here you can see the uh, instrument being uh, shaken up uh, really badly using a, uh, a DC motor based uh, shaker motor attached underneath this uh, plate. And the goal was to keep the uh, laser attached to the instrument on the wall uh, uh, stabilized, right? So here you can see uh, everyone's looking at the uh, uh, poster board where the laser is pointing and uh, one of the team's instruments uh, being shaked around here. Next year, uh, 
the conference was in Vegas that shows engineering uh, guys can be cool too, right? So um, this year we uh, did a thickness measurement challenge of uh, uh, glass plates. Uh, the thicknesses varied from uh, 500 micrometers to 100 micrometers. Uh, we realized very soon that uh, you know casino hotel is not a great place to uh, do a precision engineering challenge. You can see uh, uh, from the signal where uh, it's going all over the place because of the vibration, uh, this is a confocal uh, signal from this confocal microscope. You can also see the water in a, a, a glass is uh, uh, rattling around. In 2019, uh, the conference was in uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, this year uh, also marks uh, the year where uh, a kilogram was related to uh, Planck's constant rather than uh, being related to a, a physical artifact. And it was a Kibble balance challenge where uh, teams had to measure uh, uh, five different uh, masses uh, without uh, using a weighing machine, but by using the uh, uh, magnetic uh, uh, um, uh, flex uh, density of, uh, you know, it's, it's the Kibble balance principle. Uh, it's, it's worth uh, reading about it. And then it was 2020. We all know there was the pandemic here. Um, even though we uh, were uh, um, enthusiastically designing this uh, XY air bearing stage and a diamond tool uh, to uh, conduct a diffraction uh, grading scribing challenge, we had to revert back because, uh, of course, uh, shipping all this equipment to uh, uh, different states and a couple of teams in the world were not feasible. So uh, we made the challenge to be a uh, um, just to control the uh, force of these uh, dummy scribe tool. Um, and teams did pretty well. Uh, there were a uh, uh, couple of uh, new teams that participated, uh, which one of them uh, were, have not even used flexures before. So that was uh, all cool for to uh, learn for ourselves and for them. And 21, we were back uh, to the um, uh, physical place, but it was still hybrid. And uh, we had to accommodate uh, two teams uh, uh, to participate uh, virtual. And uh, most of the teams from the US uh, were uh, physically present in uh, uh, Minneapolis. Uh, here you can see the uh, XY air bearing stages uh, that uh, new bearings, uh, sorry, new way air bearings, uh, they manufactured it. And uh, Mark Kosmoski from our committee uh, uh, worked together with them to design these stages. And uh, these are the uh, samples that uh, uh, our teams have made. And I think uh, some of the teams that participated last year also uh, are here and they would recognize this. And this is an example picture of uh, one of the diffraction grading that they made. So this is a list of uh, uh, student survey from 2021. Uh, uh, if you uh, go through the list uh, for some new participant, they would learn uh, what to expect uh, out of the student challenge. So here we are, um, this year's challenge will be measuring a, a freeform optic of an Alvarez mirror, which uh, uh, Corning, one of our uh, uh, sponsor and also our committee members, uh, Ray, Katie, and uh, Chunji Fan, uh, they uh, uh, fabricated this for us. And you'll measure this uh, surface area using the XY air bearing stages and this optical pickup unit, which are used in Blu-ray uh, DVD CD players. A big shout out to these guys uh, who has put out the information of this uh, pickup unit. Uh, without them, uh, it wouldn't be possible for us to uh, design this uh, bespoke PCB to uh, uh, sense and control this uh, pickup unit. And these are the uh, teams that are participating this year. I think this is a good time for you to uh, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and uh, we'll continue on after that. Say, uh, people from Navajo, can you go ahead and say your name, um, your uh, uh, a major, and uh, what research you are working on? Uh, Shaquille, I see you. <clears throat> yeah, uh, hello. My name is Shaquille Coho. I'm part of the Navajo Tech University team. I'm currently an electrical engineer. And I don't think I'm doing any research this year. Right, that's cool. Yep. Anyone else from Navajo? 
Yeah, my name is uh, Roy Raphael. I am a graduate of Nav Navajo Technical University. I'm actually now a faculty for the electrical engineering department, and I'm a graduate student at Purdue going into um, computer vision. It's awesome. Hi, my name is Roshonda Shirley. I am from Naval Technical University. I'm a fourth year student and I am majoring in electrical engineering with the concentration of computer science. Hello, uh, my name is Jonathan Smith. I'm from Navajo Technical University and my major is in electrical engineering, uh, focusing in manufacturing. Awesome. So I guess that's everyone from now. Is that right? Uh, my name is Strawberry Livingston, uh, majoring in electrical engineering with concentration in um, power and energy. Um, I've been working on research um, with uh, myself and Rashonda Shirley. Um, we've been uh, trying to implement a, a, dr a drone program into the Navajo Reservation to um, survey and collect samples on abandoned uranium mines. So. Uh, that's one sweet. of our projects that's, that's going on. Nice to meet you, everyone. And I am the last one. My name is Edwina Leslie, also at NTU, and also my major is electrical engineering with the concentration of power and energy system. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Uh, is anyone from UNC Charlotte here? And maybe they didn't get the uh, mail. Okay, I don't see any uh, familiar names. All right, uh, next one uh, up is Senior Staff, Arizona. Hi, everybody. I'm Brandon Schauth, who I'm uh, uh, an assistant professor here in uh, the College of Optical Sciences. Um, and uh, yeah, all the, all the students are <laughs> too busy or didn't get the email or something. They're probably um, working on research. Oh yeah, that's a good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, they uh, they're all optical engineering students, um, except one is a mechanical engineering student. Um, some of them work with me in research, and some of them uh, work with other faculty. But they're all quite good. Nice. Yeah, good. <laughs> I hope oh. you enjoy uh, trying to inspect the Alvarez. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, UT1, can you go ahead? Sure, um, I'm Ian. I'm in uh, a third year PhD student at UT working in dynamic systems and controls. And my research is in uh, precision motion solutions. Is there anyone else from team one? All right. Yeah, we can go to team two now. Uh, I'm Bart. I am majoring in mechanical engineering, dynamic systems and controls. My research is in making precision machines for uh, nano imprint lithography and fabricating devices of it. So, yeah, thanks. Um, my name is Aaron. I'm a second year PhD student. I'm studying materials engineer, or sorry, material science uh, in the mechanical engineering department. And I'm working with Dr. Cullinan on the uh, microscale selective laser centering project. Nice. I'm Laura. Um, I'm a third year PhD student at Austin II, and I'm working on um, direct drive motors for robotic applications. Uh, is that everyone from uh, UT2? Yeah, it's just three of us. Okay, so the next one up is uh, Auburn plus Ohio State. Hey guys, I'm Cyrus. I'm a undergraduate in aerospace here at Auburn. Uh, Nick and I are doing research into making diamond turning machines. Hi, I'm, I'm Nick. I'm also an undergraduate 
and I'm in uh, mechanical engineering. Nice. Uh, Cyrus, you're going to advertise for your uh, YouTube channel? I don't know if that's necessary at the moment. <laughs> right. People can Google. Okay. Yeah, pro professional instruments or PI ask you to wear that shirt? <laughs> Things Make are busted to, to my shows. <laughs> Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Andrew Young, and I'm the Ohio State student on the Ohio State Auburn combo team. Uh, I'm a fourth, or I guess a fifth year uh, mechanical engineering undergrad. So I'm, I'm graduating next spring. Uh, my research right now is with MEMS devices. We're working on uh, stabilizing um, resonators in terms of frequency. And in the future, I might uh, hopefully get more involved with diamond turning though. So that's a big interest for me. Awesome. Next one up is uh, Northwestern. Um, so I'm Malachi. Uh, I'm uh, going to be a brand new PhD student here in the mechanical engineering department, uh, working in the lab of Dr. Guo. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm Yang Huang. I'm, I'm a 30 year PhD student uh, from Western University. Uh, I'm in mechanical engineering department. Uh, my research focuses on the auto precision machining. Uh, I'm a master's student. Uh, I'm working on the happy project of my name, Xi Xianyang. Uh, I'm Henry Sattral. I'm a fourth year physics student at Carleton College, but I've been working with the team at Northwestern on. Malachi's project of ultrasonic additive manufacturing. Nice. Yeah, I guess uh, that's everyone, right? If did we miss any student who's uh, present? All right, that's good. Okay, yeah, let's uh, move on. I'm gonna share the screen again. And do you have any questions on uh, whatever I uh, talked so far? Whoa, animations. So how do you start from the uh, present screen? You need some help. The bottom right, the little like keyboard next to the minus sign. Yeah, it takes me to the uh, first screen. At the top, if you see slideshow, you can click on slideshow. Uh, that's then, right. yeah, uh, great. Oh, to the exact opposite of what I was trying to do. All right, uh, you can see the full screen, right? Can you? Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, great. So yeah, these are the, uh, most of the uh, equipment that are uh, provided to you guys. I'm just gonna go one by one really quick. So two sets of, uh, air bearing stages scanning in X and Y axis, and a 16-bit capable uh, DAC and amplifier unit to control the, uh, the voice calls of the bearing stages. And the PCB, which communicates this with, uh, with this DAC box and the uh, encoders that measures the uh, motion of the stages. So uh, yeah, the OPU here is attached on the uh, top stage. And you also have a Z-axis micrometer, which you can use to uh, move your uh, uh, optical specimen up and down. And this is the uh, custom PCB we've uh, designed and fabricated, which talks with the OPU. And we also provided our uh, line precision provided uh, uh, this capacitance probe, uh, which you will learn uh, what you will use it for in the uh, next set of slides. And we also uh, have given you our um, Motus Mechanical has uh, given uh, these MIG blocks, which you can use to uh, connect this uh, capacitance probe uh, to the uh, air bearing uh, stage of your choice. And of course, the power supplies. So we couldn't provide a Myria controller. Uh, we believe since you guys, some of them participated in the past, so they must have one. If not, uh, please let us know. We'll arrange for one. So a few words about the optical pickup unit. Uh, this uh, device has a, uh, a parallel guided uh, wire flexures actuated by a voice call inside. 
It also has a uh, lens which takes uh, three different sources of light, UV, red, and infrared, and uh, you can focus, us, uh, focus the light onto a specimen. Uh, it also has a uh, x-axis uh, coil, which is not uh, uh, a feature of the board we are providing you this year, though. So the signal output from this uh, uh, OPU looks something like this. And uh, uh, the sensor is a uh, quadrant detector with, of course, four uh, uh, quadrants, right? As the surface moves up and down or when the OPU moves and up, up and down, the focus point will uh, uh, go in and out of focus by using the astigmatic lens and other optics inside this uh, system. Uh, that spreads out the beam uh, in an elliptical fashion, right? So that creates, uh, uh, when you take all the summation of the quadrants and plot, it'll look uh, like this, which I call confocal signal. But if you add and subtract them in a different manner, uh, you can get this uh, uh, signal, which is uh, a lot more sensitive at the uh, focus area, and it's called a focus error signal. So the board we provide uh, will give you access to a uh, focus error signal only. Uh, you're going to be connecting the OPU to the board uh, using the ribbon cable and uh, make hey, sure to. Mark, yeah. We, we actually have the confocal signal too, but it's only in 12 bits. Oh, that's true. Yes, my bad. Yeah. Sorry about that. And uh, the software that uh, is being uploaded on GitHub doesn't have the feature on it, but I'll uh, update it and uh, put it on GitHub very soon. So uh, yeah, if, uh, when you put the cable together uh, with the board and the OPU, if you are from a dry area, uh, make sure to wear uh, anti-static strap. I'm gonna skip these uh, slides on XY air bearing stages, which are very self-explanatory. You are provided uh, two optics. Uh, number one is uh, what I call a test object, which is a, uh, a concave mirror of a, a nine millimeter diameter with a nine millimeter radius of curvature. And you can use this mirror to uh, set up the uh, air bearing stages, OPU and amplifier so that uh, before using this uh, uh, team Alvarez, which we call as team Alvarez because each one of you are uh, given a sample of uh, this mirror. Before measuring this, uh, get familiarized with uh, measuring this concave mirror. So uh, yeah, it's, we didn't wanna call it a, uh, a practice mirror uh, because it doesn't sound serious, you know? So uh, this Alvarez mirror uh, schematic is shown here. Uh, basically, um, instead of uh, axially moving the uh, uh, lens to focus something, you can laterally move uh, these uh, two pieces to uh, focus the uh, light beam in uh, different places on the axis. Uh, people have been using this kind of lens in uh, cell phone cameras and uh, AR, VR equipment. Uh, little, be a little careful about handling this optics. I mean, uh, you guys know better. So you would have received uh, two shipments, uh, one from uh, Lewis and the other from uh, Stuart. Uh, these are the equipment that uh, should have came with those shipments. And please let us know if you're missing any of this. Uh, some of you might have already unpacked the XY stages. If you had not, uh, follow, follow this instruction. I also uh, uh, sent a uh, email yesterday uh, just with these instructions, uh, if you were gonna do it last night. If you're using an air compressor, make sure to drain it every day. This is the picture uh, when I didn't drain it every day. Uh, it gets pretty messy. And if it gets to the air bearing stages, uh, that's not good. Uh, most of you might be using the uh, stages in a laboratory environment, which might have, uh, which will have uh, air supply, which is already filtered. Uh, but that's also usually a lie, by the way. Like we have house air where we are, and it is the most disgusting air you've ever smelled in your entire life. Yeah. So we please use a filter. Air yeah, very expensive. We've provided a uh, filter along with the stage. Uh, uh, it's here, but uh, using a additional filter uh, uh, wouldn't hurt. And we can send you a, a recommendation. It was only $15 from uh, uh, Home Depot. So this is the suggested workflow after you receive the shipments. Uh, install the LabVIEW uh, program. It's in the final uh, slides. Uh, when I said program, I meant software. Um, and uh, there are uh, files which are uploaded in GitHub. Uh, those are the files that you'll be uh, using to get things up and running. 
And uh, to use the files, we've given uh, some tutorials on uh, YouTube. Um, watch them. And once you do that, uh, set up the hardware communication. We also have uh, a slide coming up, which basically shows which cable goes where. And uh, as I mentioned here, I uh, use the concave mirror for uh, uh, setting up everything before going with the team Alvarez mirror, right? And uh, one thing to uh, be careful is don't bring anything uh, 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 ferromagnetic near the uh, uh, OPU lens uh, because it has a, a voice coil, so it has a magnet in it. Uh, that's not good for the optic. So yeah, once you're confident about uh, uh, setup uh, using the concave mirror, um, you can do uh, any other following tasks. Uh, one, you could uh, either measure the uh, aerial surface of the con concave mirror. One of the tasks is to measure a half a millimeter square area of the mirror, or you can choose to calibrate the um, uh, travel of the lens, right? So uh, all the information that you have is the voltage that's going into the current amplifier driving the coil. Uh, which is proportional to the uh, uh, travel, but it's not in uh, metrics, it's in volts, right? So you have to do a conversion from volts to uh, displacements in uh, uh, millimeters or micrometers. And uh, the scanning of both the uh, concave uh, uh, half a millimeter square aperture and the uh, team Alvarez mirror will be uh, uh, can be uh, made in a meandering manner, which is uh, which is what the uh, example code uh, provided in uh, GitHub does. Or you can also choose to raster, and there are many ways of doing it. Uh, you can use the CAD files in GitHub if you want to make any design modification or uh, for presentation purposes. And there are also uh, example MATLAB codes for uh, analyzing uh, both of these uh, uh, optics data. So what are the changes you can make to the equipment? You can make literally any change uh, uh, if you don't cause uh, damage to the equipment, right? Uh, you can add damping if it's removable uh, cleanly after the challenge. And uh, it could be mounting, lab view program, measurement procedure, uh, gains of the OPU or the XY stages. You don't even have to use the PID controller we have provided for uh, scanning the surface if you choose not to. You can also implement your own data storage strategy. Um, using the LabVIEW program and going through uh, uh, the um, measurement and the data storage, it's all uh, shown in this, uh, those YouTube videos, right? So one thing I want to mention here is teams can use up to uh, $50 of uh, uh, any external equipment that they want to use only after obtaining permission from the committee. For example, if you want to machine something out of a milling machine or even a uh, 3D printer, uh, that will include the cost of the machine, right? So it's way beyond the $50 limit. So yeah, please let us know if you wanna uh, spend some money. Uh, this is how the hardware gets uh, connected. Um, here's hey, the- uh, Yeah? Kumar, uh, regarding that, uh, I don't know if you follow what they do with the Formula One. <laughs> is that uh, it used to be teams they had a lot of money and teams that didn't have much money uh -huh. so in order to they, they, they make it uh, fair now they uh -huh. say no one can spend more than a hundred million all right <laughs> i can't remember the number yeah 140 million oh wow okay so all the teams sort of can afford to do the changes they had to do and that's one of the reasons why mercedes is not winning anymore because they're, they're the ones that had the, the most money so I, I, we should do something similar here. Right. If, if they want to spend some money, we should have a limit. Yeah, that's $50. That everybody can afford. Okay. Yeah. Just, a, just a point, right? Right, Keep right. Yeah. Just to add to this, though, if you want to get something like 3D printed from, you know, Forum Labs or Proto Labs or something, that wouldn't include the cost of the machine because it's available to everyone. But if you happen to have, like, you know, a $20,000 SLA printer in your lab, obviously that's an unfair advantage, which is why we have this kind of $50 limit that Kumar is speaking of. Yep, thanks guys. So these are the hardware uh, um, that are provided and this is how you can use the cables to connect them. Basically you have this uh, a DAC amp unit, which talks with this uh, uh, board, which connects to the MyRio microcontroller. Uh, the connection happens using the uh, Ethernet cable. 
uh, the box has uh, four ADCs. Uh, the program that is provided is for this uh, ADC one channel, which you can use to read the uh, capacitance gauge provided. Uh, this is the uh, PCB that's used for the uh, OPU, which connects to uh, um, B side of the MyRio. And this board, which talks with the DAC and the uh, encoders or the stages, connects to uh, the A side of the MyRio. And you will have uh, two phono connectors coming from the stage. It's uh, physically attached to the stage, and they go to the back side of the box. And uh, plus or minus 15 power supplies are provided, and they go here. So one thing uh, uh, to be careful is to plug these uh, um, banana connectors at the right places, right? It's all color coded, but it's always easy to make mistakes in the nights. Um, this box uh, has protection diodes, so it could protect it from uh, um, frying uh, stuff inside or killing the- uh, uh, Don't popcorn. tell them that. If you reverse the polarity, it's gonna get <laughs> Right. <laughs> So, but yeah, you provided uh, one single cable. Uh, you connect this end to your uh, power supply in the right places and it gets split from the DAC box and then goes to the uh, OPU board. So, uh, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, you need to have a MyRio. Uh, Kumar, the OPU board is really not protected. Uh, yeah. So it's important they follow the colors. Yep. So that's the one reason you go through the box because of the diode, which Liam told me not to tell you about. All right. So yeah, these are uh, uh, typical uh, hardware equipment you'll have in a lab. And uh, since we have uh, lasers in the OPU, uh, make sure to wear the UV laser uh, safety glass because that was uh, the powerful lasers of the ones uh, you have there, right? And the uh, air compressor, as I mentioned, uh, if you don't have access to any of these equipment, let us know. We'll try to arrange. What's the what's the wavelength of the laser? It's some it's somewhere around four hundred. I want to say four or five. Okay. Or four or four. And do you know if it's uh, class one, class three? It a? falls. It falls at the upper limit of uh, class three. Uh, uh, I think class three B. Call it UV enough to fry your eyeballs, wear the glasses. Yeah, I mean, unless you really intentionally look at it, uh, it's not going to be a problem. But uh, if, you know, when you're setting up the optic, people might want to poke at it, right, with their eyes. So uh, when you do that, uh, if you do that, uh, make sure to uh, wear the glasses, right? I'm also curious because, you know, the, the safety officers come in and see a class 3B laser without glasses, then that will also be a problem for right. administrators. If you want to put a number, it's somewhere between uh, uh, five to uh, seven milliwatt. Okay, that's helpful, thanks. Right. So uh, this is the rubric that you'll be uh, uh, judged on and it's uploaded in the uh, ASP website and we'll uh, keep, down, keep on updating it if there are any changes and you'll also uh, uh, let know about it. And these are the key dates uh, uh, that you need to remember. Uh, we are right now at uh, 1st September, uh, the challenge is on. And within uh, two weeks, you'll uh, do a preliminary uh, presentation, right? And they'll have uh, a list of things that I'm going to mention in the next slide. And uh, hey, Kumar, after... I want to mm -hmm. go back a little bit to, to the safety. Uh, that maybe might be important to keep in mind that because of the, the high NA of this laser, it really only focuses in one little spot that is about 1.5 millimeters away from the lens. So you had to be right, you had to really be very uh, close to it and looking at it. It's not like a standard laser, which will point everywhere. This is only right. will be focused in one little spot that is very close to the OPU, right? So it's not the same. Right? And, and, and of course, mind, right? and of course, if you uh, intentionally keep staring at the object, uh, your eyes uh, will get tired, right? Yeah. So yeah, after the preliminary presentation, you'll uh, submit a uh, report um, going through all the things you uh, did, and that will be submitted before the uh, conference, and the rest of the stuff uh, happens during the conference. For the preliminary presentation in two weeks from now, 
Um, you'll present the progress on uh, getting the uh, stages and the OPU operational. It will also be another uh, uh, Zoom meeting. We will uh, provide uh, instant feedback and we'll also uh, write you back with additional comments on the scores you made on the preliminary presentation. You can get 200 points from this presentation, which will include the uh, calibration of the uh, optical pickup unit travel and a measurement of half a millimeter square area of the concave mirror. And uh, preliminary error budget, very important. And the presentation of uh, uh, all the things you've been uh, uh, doing, right. And at the conference, you'll uh, make uh, three repeated measurements of uh, two Alvarez samples, whose uh, features may be a little different from uh, uh, the team samples that are provided. And you'll make a uh, eight millimeter square area measurement. And the conference sample have this flat region uh, on the top edge, which are not present in the uh, team sample, right? So you have to capture this flat region as well in the measurement data that you provide us, which will be uh, uh, used to compare with a, um, another measurement of the same optic made with a uh, coherent scanning interferometer. Uh, you will report the average time taken uh, for a per uh, aerial measurement of eight millimeter square. And you also get a chance to update your error budget by the uh, uh, midnight of the 10th. Uh, and uh, you'll have to present your uh, all the things that you learned and uh, uh, did uh, at a presentation and you will be asked uh, uh, questions and uh, you have to answer those questions. And, uh, the next two slides just tells you how to uh, install LabVIEW on your computer. And uh, these are the uh, uh, people that uh, we meet like every week uh, to uh, come up with the challenge and uh, keep things moving. So without uh, these guys, uh, things won't happen. And uh, you can contact us in this uh, uh, Gmail ID. And uh, there's the YouTube channel, which has the tutorials uh, that you may want to watch and the GitHub to uh, download the LabVIEW, MATLAB, and uh, the presentation of, uh, file that uh, that I just did today will also get uploaded there. All right, thank you. Uh, you can go ahead with your questions. Well, uh, we were waiting for a question. I just wanted to uh, commend you for not only this presentation, Kumar, yeah, uh, the details as well as uh, the videos, which no one's seen yet, but I, they're great, excellent. I hate YouTube videos because it's kind of a boring. <laughs> but you make them very good, so I, I, it was very enjoyable. Nice. learning from those videos thank you very much yeah thanks yeah we have only nine subscribers from the last year so spread the word out we might get more subscribers this year <laughs> yeah you're natural uh, thanks uh i had one question uh what what can be expected on the uh, pre preliminary air budget uh yeah, anything that includes the OPU, uh, XY uh, air bearing stages, amplifiers, or any hardware which you think uh, would, uh, you have to estimate how much error in the uh, uh, measurement that it may cause, right? In the 50, for example, the Alvarez mirror will be uh, 50 micrometer peak to valley. So in that 50 micrometer, uh, how much error you would expect from a uh, different set of hardware and also uh, measurement uh, process itself. All right, thank you. Yeah, and I think uh, in one of the, uh, uh, I think in the rubric document, uh, we have added a few examples of uh, uh, error budget. Take a look at it. Also, you can, yeah, you can always uh, contact the committee. Uh, this is for generally for everybody, and uh, we will uh, try to set up a Zoom meeting if uh, uh, that is required. And you can uh, uh, yeah, shoot us emails anytime. Yeah, one more thing I want is maybe you guys can think about the, uh, you know, is is the bra uh, is the copper a brass surface? You know, also it's free form, uh, diamond turned shape, and uh, when you mirror that, you use different angle, and your OPU will will also have the optical uh could be noise, the sensor itself, you know, the the optical. Uh, lens itself maybe also have errors. So you can count that also if you want. Because recently I, I was doing one project, 
I try to use different professional instruments. I realize it's very challenging when you measure something in, in uh, less than micrometer levels uh, scales. So you, you always have problem. Uh, I think you guys are doing something like close to that. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure how many people have optical background. I, I'm struggling on that right mm -hmm. now. So, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I talked with optical engineer. It seems uh, there are a lot of things need to improve besides the stage uh, itself. You know, your, your X, Y stage, your, your voice coil and your thermal stable vibration, that kind of thing. Besides that, it's also, there are optical thing needs to consider. That's I learned uh, just recently. Thanks for the comment, Shinji. Hey, Kumar, were uh, MET blocks supposed to be included with the provided equipment? Uh, yes, sir. MET blocks, were those, uh, were they supposed to be included with the provided equipment that you guys sent? Uh, yes, so uh, you receive uh, uh, four to five blocks of uh, different uh, lengths and uh, width. Uh, I'll, I'll let you guys know what exactly are those. Uh, uh, actually, it's in the slide. Uh, one second. In the shipments. Uh, you see the shipment slide, right? Uh, do you? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So uh, these are the MIG block, uh, MIG blocks that you are sent out, right? And you can find their uh, model number, uh, their CAD file, and their website uh, linked here. All right. Thanks. Yep. Uh, the other comment I wanted to make is that uh, this, given that the conference is coming up very soon, we only have like a month to do the whole thing. Uh, I recommend for you guys to get started as soon as possible. That way uh, you get enough, enough time to deal with problems because there will be issues. And so the sooner the better, right? Instead of procrastinating yeah. until the last day, we're trying to figure out how to ship something to you, right? Yeah, it's a good point because typically uh, teams will have about one and a half months in the past because the conference will uh, takes place will take place in the early uh, first week of November, but this year uh, it's uh, about a month early. Hi, Mark, how are you? It's, you've been missing in action. Yeah, I was I had a machine that needed attention, so I showed up late. Uh, <laughs> and I was on vacation the past two weeks. So. Yeah, yeah, I saw those email replies, yeah. Good to see you guys. Yeah, too. Yeah, are there uh, any other questions? I just wanted to make a comment. Thank you for all the work that you guys have put into uh, putting this together. I think this is a really great, uh, I mean, the student challenge, I think is great every year. And I think uh, this one looks quite exciting. Hopefully the students uh, enjoy it as well. So thank you guys. Yeah, thanks, Brandon. Yeah, big shout out to Kumar and Luis for making this happen. Agreed. Yeah, Luis uh, stays up until uh, 2 to 3 a.m. every day. Uh, yeah, I don't know when he sleeps. And he's no. pretty active in uh, WhatsApp you. texts too. That's you and everybody else doing uh, work. So right. I, don't, I don't take the credit. <laughs> 
All right. Yeah, if there are uh, no more questions, uh, thanks for showing up. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, this will be uploaded in uh, our YouTube channel. Thanks, guys.